please allow me to introduce Steve Miller, who will share no cost, low cost lab sustainability strategies. Stephen Miller is the executive director of the lab project. He enjoyed a long career in industrial energy efficiency and is a leader in lab sustainability solutions. Steve is also the I2SL New England chapter vice president. He is co-host of the Cambridge Sustainable Labs Group and a member of the Energy Efficiency Advisory Council of the State of Massachusetts. The first time that we held a Go Green Symposium back in 2019, people came up to me afterwards and said, you need to meet Steve Miller. Um, Steve was already well known for helping local laboratories to reduce energy and reduce waste. And I've learned so much from him over the years. And I very much respect the mission of the lab project to help all biotech companies to become green le leaders in their community. So I'd like to welcome you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. So as um, Nicole said, I'm Steve Miller. I'm the executive director and founder of the lab project. We, pro we provide sustainability solutions for small labs that just don't know where to start. And this deck today is about um, low cost and no cost solutions around sustainability. There's really, from our perspective, four elements of the solution. And we're gonna talk about every one of these in this presentation. So we'll talk about energy and energy management, water, water management, waste reduction, and then managing your vendors on your behalf. So let's jump into energy. So really, the first thing that I would suggest you start is look at how you buy energy. Most utilities have options that you can buy from a renewable source. So making sure that the energy that you do use comes from a green, a green source and not from a fossil fuel plant. And then you want to start to look at how you're using that energy that you just bought. I would take advantage of utility audits. that are always offered from your local utility to come in and take a peek at your building and give you solutions. You can couple that with mass save incentives, which is a statewide program, providing money for energy efficiency programs and projects. And then look at lighting. That really is the best place to start. It's pretty easy to look at and know where you are. You have good control systems. They're very inexpensive. Do you have LED? They're the next and the best quality you can get these days. Then I would start to look at your individual equipment. So chill up. Can you take your minus 80 ULT from minus 80 to minus 70? Studies have shown that has, this has no impact on your samples. You can save up to 30% of energy, and a lot of utilities will give you an incentive to do that. I would also look at your biosafety cabinet and how you use that, and make sure you use it in a standby mode when it's not being used, or better off, turn it off. I would look at your plug load on your bench. Everything that plugs in on the bench doesn't have to be on 24-7. Do you really need that water bath on on a Sunday? So take a good hard look at that. And there's very easy management strategies to automate that and very inexpensively. And probably one of the most biggest energy users in the lab is conditioned air that was one through, once through in the fume hood. So make sure you're using the SAS position correctly in the fume hood to properly manage that airflow while making a safe environment. So now we're going to move on to water. Water, when you look at it, is pretty straightforward from what you can do. So aerators, pretty easy to install, very inexpensive. Put them on your sinks and they'll reduce the, the water flow. And then we'll look at temperature control. Can you go to an instantaneous um, water heating system so you're not always keeping that water hot over a continuous period of time? And then one of the pieces of equipment that uses a lot of water is autoclaves. So if you look at the way you use your autoclave, make sure it's full. Make sure you use it on a regular basis and not have it half full so that you maximize the water that you use as it goes through the system. Now we'll look at waste. A lot of my clients, this is the place where I start. Inventory, red, inventory your red bag uses. Red bags are expensive and not everything needs to go in the red bag waste. I have a client in Cambridge that did an audit with their waste vendor and reduce their energy costs by almost 25% just by looking at what they were throwing away and how they were throwing it away. Recycling programs. Do you have a recycling program? Does your landlord 
provide a recycling program? Does your vendor re provide a recycling program? Composting. Are you composting in your, in your kitchen? Glove recycling. Again, not everything needs to be thrown away. And there's a lot of vendors now that are offering recycling programs or take-back programs with industrial gloves. Plastic circularity. So working with companies that take back the plastic consumables and then they get reused into other products. So you create a circular system and it's not getting thrown away. And look at how you're managing your, your consumables. Do you have to have all plastic? Can you use glass? Just take a smart look on how you're using things that you generally will be throwing away. And then vendor management, really getting your vendor on board to help you make the decisions you need to become sustainable. So take a look at your inventory of your existing stock. Do you have too much? Will they take some back? Can you share resources? Are you in a lab that has other labs next door? Can you share resources with, your, with those folks so you're not always buying your own stuff, but you can share those things that everybody has? And limit your chemical purchasing. Take a hard look at what you really, really need and limit your storage. That way you're limiting your stock, you're limiting your, what you're buying, reducing costs and keeping things out of the environment. So those are the things that we look at at the lab project. Again, we provide sustainability guidance. Um, we do it for free. We look at energy, water, waste, and behavioral programs. So this is how you contact us. So I'm happy to answer any questions you have about any of these resources and connect you with folks that are in the community that can take it to the next level for you. So please reach out, happy to talk. And then I got a bit of a tease. This is, the, this is what's coming, this is next. So look for this in midday and we're very excited. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole.